Greetings one and all. What power possessing beings are there in your life? What power possessing beings are trying to take over this planet? What power possessing beings, beings, beings think they're in control? And this is something Gurdjieff discusses a lot in All and Everything, Beelzebub's Tales to his grandson. And he talks about how the power possessing people can sometimes lead us astray in a very wrong way. Because of that need for power and to possess everything and to be in control of everything can turn the ego into quite a strange being. And I was reading about well, I was reading the chapter Beelzebub's Opinion of War, long old chapter for those that have read it. No, it goes on, on and on and on, but with wise words throughout and on every page all about, well, why does man go to war? Usually it's the power-possessing people that send people out to war because the power-possessing people are not normally the ones on the front line, but because they want whatever it is they need, they've got to send the minions you know, the subversive people out to do the war and fighting for them. You know, these power-possessing people have no understanding of what it is to go into war ourselves. Okay, it's the 21st century and people come back with saying, well, it's all done by drones now. In a way, yeah, I suppose Western world does use drones and things, but we still have lots of war going on in other countries that maybe do not make it to the mainstream news that we are not aware of. There seems to be a war going on somewhere all the time. Why Gurdjieff talks about how we have this innate need to fight each other, and definitely power possessing people would use that to get what they want. Where hopefully, us peace loving people don't see it that way. One of my concerns about this current war of the Western world. There's no peace process going on, which is unusual. And I think you've probably heard other people discuss this as well. It is very strange there is no peace process. It's as if they want this war for, you know, they're after something. But a, in Beelzebub's Towers to his grandson, in the Beelzebub's Opinion of War chapter, Gurdjieff does cover how different societies have been made over time. I'm just going to do a bit of reading. Where was I starting? He says that most power possessing people, he says, I'm going to just read a quote, actually. Still, it does occasionally happen there that some power possessing or important being of the earth suddenly chances to think not under the influences of the reflexes of his stomach and sex organs, but thinks sincerely and quite seriously about these or other questions with particular regard to this terrifying terrestrial question. And he's been talking about, you know, why do people want to go to war? And he says most of these power-possessing people are, are driven by their stomach and sexual urges. And again, it, this is misuse of sexual energy. This is why a lot of people go down a bit of a bad route because they're misusing that sexual energy that's within them instead of using it for some kind of creative force or, you know, putting it, I, I encourage people go down an art road or start writing or do something creative where people that aren't doing that and have an excessive sexual energy building up within them. As many of you know from Gurdjieff's writings, not just talking about the sexual energy of all going, go and get laid or whatever. This sexual energy is a part of what keeps us alive and going. It's a creative energy. And if it gets pent up, it instead of being a uh, higher vibration, it turns down into a lower vibration, which turns into anger, which turns into, you know, fighting. We see the fighting on the streets just amongst general local people when they're going down the pub or whatever. It's all a misuse of this kind of energy. And obviously, when that's in the elite happening, that's when we start having wars and such like. Obviously, we have wars within, you know, political agendas and things like that. We have all seen <laughs> political arguments going on. This is why we have different sides from different polit politics and teams trying to vie for being in control, power possessing people. And and Gurdjieff also reminds us that power possessing people they they are very automatic in their actions. They are very reflexive. 
but automatic in a kind of robotic way in that they they see how other people have got what they want and so they follow them kind of patterns as well and usually they're not getting it that misuse of and pent up energy within them goes wrong and comes out in a bit of a bad way but he also talks about Gurdjieff talks about how the different groups and and countries of the time were trying to create uh, groups to make this better, to stop war, to make people understand what people are. And he discusses, I'm going to quote now, then for the first time, just such important beings from among the ordinary beings of most of the communities of the continent Asia, and at the time he's talking about all these wars going on in Asia, assembled at the mentioned place with the aim of jointly drawing up a common agreement that there should never again arise among the different Asiatic communities any cause whatsoever for such processes of reciprocal destruction. And reciprocal destruction is we all die, everybody dies, and by going to war, we're killing people for you know, no reason, really. We're killing people for somebody else's agenda. You know, we should be all very anti-war, but they, they all promote war, become a soldier, defend your country, defend your family. You know, it's kind of like a, an inverted blackmail. You feel like you're doing the right thing. So many people I can see go to war thinking they're doing it for the best. And I, I don't know if any of you have read accounts of people that went to war in World War I, you know, when they really were on the front line. Some of the accounts of people that survived that are astonishing in how frightened they were, how they hadn't realised what they were going to. You know, war is glorified by the masses and the media. But when you're actually there in the front, front in the thick of it, it's not glorifying at all. You know, this is why people come home shell-shocked with PSDD or post PTS, post-traumatic stress disorder, because having to go and kill somebody else is very difficult. I've had people talk to me about how, you know, if someone went back in time and killed Hitler when, a, when he was a child, we wouldn't have had World War II. Well, I ask you, could you go back in time and kill a child? Only a really cold-blooded person could go back and kill a child. Anyway, Gurdjieff goes on to say, this society of being had as their motto the following. God is where man, man's blood is not shed. A wonderful motto. It should be, yeah, God is where man's blood is not shed. Yet I also think God is there where there is war because he wants to be, he, she, it, wants to be there with those. God walks with everyone at whatever time, never turns his back on you. Though I do feel when you do something heinous or something really evil, maybe God does turn his back on you then. But he's always there waiting for you to come back to him. Maybe God can't look upon heinous acts. So I'm just going off in a bit of a thought form there. Maybe I'll come back to that one. But God is all the divine source is always waiting for us to go to him, her, it. You know, this is why we've been given free will. They the divine source doesn't the divine source is always there. Walking with us as in that. Lovely poem, The Footprints, The Footsteps poem, which I think I've got somewhere. You know how he talks about he's always here. What is it? One night I had a dream. I dreamt I was walking along the beach with the Lord. Across the sky flashed scenes from my life. For each scene, I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to me and the other to the Lord. When the last scene of my life flashed before me, I looked back at the footprints in the sand. I noticed that many times along the path of my life, there was only one set of footprints. I also noticed that it happened at the very lowest and saddest times in my life. This really bothered me and I questioned the Lord about it. Lord, you said that once I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all the way. But I have noticed that during the most troublesome times in my life, there is only one set of footprints. I don't understand why when I needed you most, you would leave me. The Lord replied, my precious, precious child, I love you and I would never leave you. During your times of trial and suffering, when you see only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. Isn't it beautiful? So this society of beings that had as their motto the following sentence, God is where man's blood is not shed. 
But owing to their various personal egoistic and vainglorious aims, the ordinary terrestrial important and power-possessing beings who had then assembled very soon quarrelled among themselves and went their ways home without accomplishing anything. Which is what I see happening in many societies and many groups and many peace um, uh, peace. I can't think of the word, peace groups. Many people trying to put forward a peace agenda. You know, this is too much ego going in and people thinking they know the better way or that their way is the only way. This is all power possessing, which is why, you know, Gurdjieff stresses to us we need to be impartial, listen to everybody's views. And being impartial makes you see the whole picture, which many people don't do, which I was talking about in a previous show. Then he talks about another society that started. And this society existed there with the motto, love one another and God will love you. And this society, having given no positive results for the same reason, ended its existence also in the same manner. Later, they again formed such a society, but this time in the country which is today called Egypt. And this society began to exist there under the motto, if you learn how to create a flea, only then dare you kill a man. What a saying. If you know how to create a flea, you can kill a man. If you can create, you can kill. And then I got thinking about that. Well, surely mothers create. They bring forth a new life. But men also have a part in that. So this is why men and women can still kill others, because they do create children. More humans. Still later, the same arose in the country Persia, where the following sentence was taken as the motto for this society of theirs. All men are divine. If only one is violently killed by another, then all will be as nothing. It is. It's like if one life is taken by somebody else, if one person is killed by another, obviously there's accidents, but if it's a murder or, you know, some kind of heinous crime like that, that ripples out and destroys the vibrations of humanity which is why we need to keep a higher vibration going because we're going, we're having to put out against all the negative and lower vibrations that are being put out there by, you know, other people, other people that are not thinking, other people that are not feeling or being awake enough to be aware of what it is they're doing. Which is why we're working for his endlessnesses, sorrow. This is something Gurdjieff talks about a lot. We're here, if we do the work properly, we're helping his endlessness. You know, God God is upset. The divine source is upset at all the heinous, horrible crimes and ways of humanity, the immorality of it all. And we can alleviate that by doing the right thing. You know, and then there's another society was started which had its motto of the earth is equally free for all. And it is. This is something that I, I stress lots to people. We need to make sure that the earth is free for all. It's nice to be part of your nation. Nice, you know, I'm I'm British. Yay! Happy to be part of that. But we can't be too patriotic. We must remember that we're all members of this earth. Because otherwise, if we only lean towards our nationality and our countries then we start becoming divided. But there's nothing wrong with being, oh, I'm from you know Spain, I'm Spanish, or I'm from America, I'm American. You know, there's nothing wrong with that as long as we also remember we are part of a one world, one love, one peoples. Being from another country is just another way of um, explaining and identifying who we are, that's all. But at the same time, we are one race the members of this latter society namely the earth is equally free for all might perhaps have accomplished something effective because in the first place they had as the basis of their aims an actual actualizable program and secondly because they were all without exception old and honorable beings who had already had a great deal of experience during their planetary existence and had in consequence become disillusioned about everything that their ordinary planetary existence could in general give them. And thanks to this, they had fewer egoistic, vain and other properties on account of which similar societies there usually break down. 
So we're trying to not break down our society, our group of people that are continuing this kind of work. We're trying to keep ourselves together. Even with in Gurdjieff groups, I see exactly these problems that Gurdjieff just talked about, egoistic and vanity. And not just in Gurdjieff groups, in everything I ever encounter. But then if we can be examples of not being egoistic and not vain, maybe that will help other people work on themselves and not be like that as well. And then we can perhaps keep, I'm not saying, because nothing's forever and societies don't always last. And I see now at the moment, a lot of the societies I used to go to in London were struggling to keep going after this last shit show of the last few years, reopening, people just aren't coming back. But maybe this is a time of change and a time of renewal and hopefully new societies and new groups will spring up. New teachers will be there for people. I've said in a past show that I've been doing some workshops in London with people. Um, they'd be more one-to-one. -one. Someone did get in touch and ask how they could come to my workshop. They're more one-to-ones at the moment that I've been doing with people. Though I am going to be at Steiner House in the term after this Christmas. We're going to do for three weeks. Um, over three months, once a month, a little alchemical talk, but it'd be from the Rudolf Steiner point of view, which people are welcome to come to. Do check their website after, should be up after Christmas, what dates we're doing it on, should people want to come. I'm, I might start doing the one-to-ones on Zoom again. I, I'm still thinking about it. But if you're interested, just uh, email me, because I'm always here to help or no, not necessarily I'm not a helper but you know it's always good to talk to people and yeah if people want one-to-one -one soul chats and help with their development of their soul please get in touch but also keep being free remember the earth is free for all and be a free soul thank you for watching listening and love to you all peace